We've been talking today with Roxy Coop, a registered nurse at Baxter Regional Medical Center, who has a wonderful program that she conducts monthly, which is a stop smoking program. And Roxy, tell us some more about the program. You, you've got four phases that you, I think you were talking about. And the, the first one is when people come in and they just go through the steps okay. again. I think <coughs> that would help everyone. You come in the very first time. We, mm -hmm. do, we go over the addiction process, the psychological, mm -hmm. the emotional, the habit, and the physical dependence. Mm -hmm. And we prepare a plan. I really encourage everyone to keep a journal. Why do I smoke? Mm -hmm. Is it because when I just woke up, I need that nicotine, that first one in the morning with my coffee? I know why I'm smoking that cigarette. But maybe the next one is because I'm bored. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm angry. Maybe I'm even happy. A lot of my people come back because they went out and had a couple of beers with the guys. Yeah. And they were happy, and the next thing you know, they're right back. Um, maybe I'm tired. A lot of times we reward ourselves with a cigarette when we're a smoker. Mm -hmm. Just getting off of work. I just finished scrubbing the floors, so I sat down and reward myself with a cigarette. Mm -hmm. We talk about healthier ways of rewarding ourselves for these things. Um, and then maybe I'm hungry. Women especially will use cigarettes as an appetite suppressant. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, and I know when I smoked, I'd much rather smoke than eat. Yeah. Yeah. But it, you can find sure. healthier things to eat where that's not a problem. And, and aren't you too, if you're a, um, a heavy caffeine uh, drinker yes. and you've got the nicotine and the caffeine, you're just putting your body in an up and down, <laughs> you know, all day. And it, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because, <clears throat> excuse me, when we are smokers or tobacco users, mm -hmm. we process our caffeine faster. Really? I so no when idea. you oh, because right. your heart rate's up. Well, I'm, well, I'm not really sure, or, but uh, you know, like the old Dean Martin movies, yeah. where you had to pot a coffee in one hand and yeah. sixteen cigarettes in the other. So when you quit smoking or quit using tobacco, you hold on to that caffeine longer. Well, the problem with that is you're a little tired when you first quit, so you may try to make up for that with more caffeine. Oh my! And then you start feeling jittery. Yeah. And you're thinking it's a nicotine withdrawal when actually you've got too much caffeine. Yeah. Don't give up all your caffeine or you'll have other Headaches withdrawal problems. Headaches beyond belief. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> Been there, but, done that. <laughs> yeah, but, but try to maybe reduce it by mm -hmm. about a third. Um, something I like to share with my young people is you know how Mountain Dew really markets their drinks for that high caffeine, yeah. high energy? Mountain Dew has less caffeine than a Diet Pepsi. Really? Yes. I just, I just think that's hysterical, the way they market that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, caffeine's a big issue. Alcohol's a big issue. Um, alcohol's a depressant. Smoking's a stimulant. So they go really well together. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should never have that glass of wine again, but you might want to consider not having it for a little bit when you first quit smoking. Mm -hmm. And we don't always make the best decisions. Um, if you could smoke just one and be okay, be a social smoker. Yeah. I'd do it in a minute, yeah. but we are just like alcoholics. We can't have that just, just one. one. We'd be, mm -hmm. I'd be right back to a pack a day mm -hmm. in no time. I'd be fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't work 12 hours, that's for sure. <laughs> and, that, and that brings us to another point. More and more industries are not hiring tobacco users. Right. Or they are penalizing them. I know I get a big break on my health insurance so just from being a non-smoker. Non -smoker. Yeah. Are and it's only going to get worse. Worse, yeah. You know, and I tell my my people, um, you've got to start taking responsibility for your own actions mm -hmm. and your own health. Doctors are humans. If you don't take care of yourself, after a while, they get kind of tired of taking care of you for them. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's very frustrating to have bypass surgery and find out your patient is still smoking. Yeah, because that is the number one preventable cause of cardiac disease. And here, February is Heart Month. Mm -hmm. um, women don't realize that the number one killer of women is cardiovascular disease. Right. Um, we hear a lot about breast cancer and saving the tatas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but the number one cancer, is the heart. It, well, and the yeah. number one cancer is lung cancer. Oh, really? For, yeah. So, uh, in 85 to 90 percent of lung cancers are directly related to tobacco use. 
if you live with a smoker, you say you never smoked, but you lived with one, and almost all of us grew up with smokers, mm -hmm. your chances of lung cancer are 30% higher than somebody who didn't live with someone. Yep. I had a patient, um, this was last year, and she was dying of lung cancer. She never smoked, but her husband did. And mm -hmm. I can't imagine how devastating that would be. Yeah. yeah. To know that you to, were... To know you contributed to that. Yeah. People also don't realize that Pancreatic cancer is directly related to tobacco use. Bladder cancer, cataracts, wrinkles. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's been in the newspaper quite a bit lately how we're discovering more and more disease processes are directly related to tobacco use. Mountain Home seems to have a higher percentage of tobacco users than the country as a whole. Mm -hmm. It's about 18% nationwide. We're about 22%. And I'm not sure why that is, but of that 22%, 35% of them have less than a high school education. Mm -hmm. So the very people who can least afford to be burning up their money are the ones who are, mm -hmm. who are most addicted. Mm -hmm. And the tobacco companies know that. They market towards that. Sure. We've just recently started taking the tobacco products out of reach of the children. They actually factor in so much money for theft and they'll put the um, flavored cigarettes and cigars and mm -hmm. such at a three-foot height so that the younger people can see them and easily pocket them. They're developing new markets. Mm -hmm. It's no different than a drug dealer. Yep. They're trying to get these young people addicted so that they have new markets to replace yep. the ones that are dying off. So 2014 is an excellent year to be change your habits and be yes. healthy. Yeah. I don't ever want the people who come to the program to feel like they're giving up something, they're gaining a whole new life. What a great way to put it, Roxy. Yeah. That's perfect. You're gaining, gaining control yes. over an addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, when I smoked, I couldn't even go to Sunday school and church because I couldn't last that long without smoking. Mm -hmm. And it was too embarrassing to go back smelling like a cigarette. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I could have never been a nurse if I hadn't quit smoking. Right. I couldn't go 12 hours without smoking. My husband wouldn't go to the movies with me because they don't have smoke breaks anymore. <laughs> yeah. So it really controlled our lives, and it, it really controlled my self-esteem because it was embarrassing to be outside smoking mm -hmm. in the rain when everybody else is, like, having donuts. <laughs> yeah. Having fun. <laughs> yeah, and having fun. Exactly. So, yeah, your self-respect, control of your health, money. Oh. Money is a huge motivator. I can't imagine. I can, you know. If uh, you smoke a pack a day, you spend at least $35 a week. That's $140 plus a month. I mean, you could, buy, you could do some really fun stuff. Well, with $140, yeah. you bet. And, I, and these people, I tell them, pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. They always find the money for their drug, right? Mm -hmm. They'll go without food. They'll go without medicine. They'll go without gasoline. So yep. pay yourself first and then do something fun. Go to the movies. Go for a, to the park. Buy yourself something pretty. Yeah. You know, pat yourself on the back. I had one lady bought herself a hot tub. Oh, my. Yeah, she was thrilled to death. <laughs> One guy bought a, a boat because he could make monthly payments for what he was spending in tobacco See, money. That's a, what a great yeah. spin right. to get people thinking in a different manner. You could go on a cruise. You're, yeah. you're talking over $1,000 a year yeah. that you're just burning up. And when we talk about tobacco use at the Pites House, smoking is the most common, but the tobacco companies are trying to market chewing smokeless tobaccos as mm -hmm. a safe alternative and they're not no that's all sorts of cancer and stomach it? cancer esophageal <laughs> cancer they mm -hmm. actually put abrasives in there so that it's absorbed faster into the system so one dip is equal to about three cigarettes oh my goodness it's very very addictive wow and it's more socially accepted you don't always know that somebody has a chew in yeah. their mouth and at the schools the coaches are doing it in front of the children. So baseball, whatever, they yeah. think that's normal. Yeah. They think that that's acceptable, mm -hmm. and it's not. No, it certainly is not. And going back to the statistic, I'm just guessing on why it might be higher here. So many really large cities are banning smoking everywhere. Yes, um, and I was so shocked when that didn't pass in Missouri. Mm -hmm. 
because I know when my husband and I go to Branson, I have to be very careful which restaurants we go to now. Mm -hmm. Because when, since he quit smoking, he is now allergic to cigarette smoke and it triggers an asthma attack. Oh my. Yeah, so, you know, that's something we just forget. Yeah. We're so fortunate here that no, there's no smoking in the restaurants, but right. you go up there and it's like, oh, what's that smell? Yeah. <laughs> it's not spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so, goodness. Yeah, that, I was really shocked that that didn't pass. That yeah. does help a lot. Yeah. One unfortunate thing is they have reversed that in our city parks now. Mm. You can smoke in the parks once again, and uh, I find that unfortunate because the children are out there, and I've seen people selling cigarettes to them. Really? Really. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, and I just that, that is just unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I know I started when I was 14. So, and the younger you are, the more damage it does to your lungs. Um, mm -hmm. We still think it's pretty cool. Yep. It's not on TV as much, but now they've introduced these cigar bars and made yes. that look really cool right. and um, that's not ex you still have mouth cancer it's the number one cause of periodontal disease uh, gum can uh, gum disease and mm -hmm. you know can you address and I don't mean to put you on the spot at, at, at all but do you have any opinions or thoughts about the e-cigarettes I don't only because there's no FDA research okay um, if it works I say go for it yeah I don't like the fact that the commercial says we can't tell you it's good for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That, Pay that, attention, yeah. folks. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, it still has nicotine, so you still have to have a quit date. And you're not getting through to the real co root cause of right. the problem, of the addiction. You're just replacing your nicotine with a different yeah. method. Yeah. Patches are the same way, but because they're on your skin, you will eventually get over this. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the e-cigarette, you're still reinforcing that. Yeah. So there's also Wellbutrin that's available by prescription. Mm -hmm. It's a mild antidepressant, and uh, people who are very anxious mm -hmm. find that it really works well for them. Good. It's just a side effect of it that people didn't smoke as much. The one that the hospital and the Christian clinic prefer is Chantex, and it works by inhibiting the same receptors in your brain as the nicotine, so as far as your brain is concerned, it no longer wants that nicotine. It no longer gets any pleasure from smoking. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. A, but it's a very expensive drug. Yeah. Not as expensive as smoking, mm -hmm. but still you have to make that sacrifice. But it would be something that could be short term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. About three so, months yeah. is the longest. And, and, yeah. yeah. Roxy, thank you so much for being on the show Well, again. thank you. Would you please give out the number again? 508-CARE, um, C-A-R-E. Okay. And I wish I knew what the number is, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> I think it's 2378, but I'm, I'm not yeah. sure. And that is the Pites Cancer Support House. And one of the wonderful, lovely volunteers there will you say you want to sign up for the smoking mm -hmm. cessation class with Roxy. And it's actually uh, cessation. Cessation. So, so many people, oh, you, it's sensational. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah. I have trouble with my S's, so <laughs> get, yeah, get the right yeah. word out there. Yeah, okay. but thank you so much for having me. And I'm sharing delighted this. that you're here, and thank you for what you're doing. That's a huge, huge something the community needs. Well, and it keeps me from smoking. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just keep that up. Thank you. All right. Come back and see us again soon, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks for joining us today for BRMC's Healthy Connections. We'll see you again next week.